Hey, Welsh Dragon Metals here. Today I'm making a sort of unusual pendant, a Buddhist manji type of sigil or icon, religious icon. Goes on like temple doors and things like that. Very similar to the swastika, except the Nazis put it at an angle. That's a Hindu thing. That's a Buddhist thing. So now you know the difference. Nice sort of indicator there, so you can see the difference. Subtle differences, but they are there. This is the tin sheet that I poured not so long ago when I made some ringing guts, my first rings. Off cuts also, not so sure what to do with these. Any suggestions? Post them in the comments. I was thinking maybe a Christian cross or some such out of that, something more funky maybe. And I have no idea what to make out of that strip. Maybe a band ring, although it would actually be very small, so we'll see. So I have a nice case, display case to put it in. Already worked some of it. Slice these parts. Just clip them off now, and I'll work them with a file quite carefully. Just using the sharp end of the snips here, clippers. Not sure what to do with them off cuts. Maybe melt them into something else. Not sure what. Maybe uh, another ring, or maybe even another pendant. This was a tin sheet. It's actually pure tin, so it's very, very soft, as you can see. You can actually cut this with a strong pair of scissors. I did in the first place. As you can see, I've put a stick stick around there. It's actually a printout that's just been lightly glued on. Very small pieces these, I'm not sure what to do with them as I said. I suppose I could turn them into very very small stars or some sort of bar strip sort of thing for a pair of earrings. Pendant, put something on them, stamp them or etch them or some such. Just look how thin it is, it's very very very, very thin metal. Is tin after all, so clean that up a bit. Foils, that side. I collect this tin powder also as a mix for a nice shiny sort of pendants, especially if you fill up a charm bottle. I got a few like that filled with different metal powders, dusts, copper, or zinc, tin, things like that, indium even. Metals that I work with most often. I'm gonna give that a little squish. Need some weight for that. It's not completely flat. Better way. As I said, tin is quite soft. Much better form to that. That actually looks really cool, does it not? Looks better than I thought it would. This is the case with most of my stuff. I think. I can see better where I am. It's actually not so bad. Need some work on this section and this section. 
just be file work for the next minute or so. I also want to put this chain on there, turn it into a nice little pendant, not just a strange sort of charm. A bit of both, I guess. Tin is skin safe, it's actually used in makeup, it makes you shiny. <laughs> That's the effect, anyway, of it. Quite an unusual piece. Definitely. Not my usual pendant. Not my usual material for working with, either. I usually work with copper. Definitely be making more such things like this. I was thinking of making um, some Egyptian anks. You know, the key of life thing. Of this same sort of material. Maybe some other things, but I'm not sure what just yet. This tin is actually getting quite hot with the friction from the violin here warming my hand up <laughs> doing this at a slight angle as this is the side that I'll be using and this will be the rear side where any working markings will be if I continue doing this Doesn't look like I'm doing much, but I'm actually beveling here. I want it to make it look a little bit more even. Right, that one's that one's even. That looks nice. That's a little bit off. It's a flex of tin there. I think I'll have to give this a little wash for use it. Because there's still some PVA glue stuck to it. Not PVA glue, some craft glue. Can't remember what kind. The water soluble one. Right. A bit stuck in there, there we go. Okay, looking much better. Woo! It's quite hot work, that. Squish that flat. Okay, that's a bit off by there. So, move that very carefully. Very nice. Any more on the off position that one could do with a squish. <sighs> Pull it nice and level. It'll look nicer when it's inside of its display case. <sighs> Hand is covered in tin. <laughs> Quite a few off cuts there. Play with. Not done yet. As I still want to put that chain on it. So a little hole by there. Very thin, so I'm using uh, purely hand power and a file, as you can see, to drill a hole or burrow a hole into the tin. As a need more control, and a drill would allow me. Nearly all the way through.
go. Go to the side. Nice hole burrowed in there. Not too wide or shallow. That's a little bit rough by there now. all the arms in a very slightly that's a little bit more chip shape isn't it incredibly shiny flatten it we flatten it just put the jumper off Far too hot. This is here. We're on a jump. That'll work anyway. That will be its new case. Split ring. These are the sustainable copper split rings that I make. Nice chain to go with it. Very pretty. Look at that. Looks very unusual. So, let's see how it looks in its home. Chain to. Oh, there we go. Let's have a little look at that. Tin powder. It's all that remains. It's back there. And there's the Manji Buddhist pendant. Complete with its own little case. Oops. Incredibly shiny. Got some weight to it also. And that's the promised pendant made from the tin sheet that I put in my ringing bit video. And there's the remaining pieces. Any suggestions of what to make from these? Leave them in the comments. Well, till next time.